Hello, hello, welcome to another episode of me watching Star Trek, the original series, season two, for the first time and watching every episode. So, um, for your own health and safety, please do not worry that I have skipped your favorite episode because I'm watching them all, regardless of what order I'm doing them in. Okay? Okay. Today we're going to be watching The Apple. Are we going to get another Adam and Eve kind of thing, like it where no man has gone before or... Or the cage, Adam and Eve? Is it the apple of your eye? Is it the big apple? Uh, does it have anything to do with fruit? Let's find out. Thank you guys for watching this episode with me, and I'll see you guys in the comments. Enjoy! Okay, some red shirts. Spock, check off. Start your reading. Cute yeoman. Great hair. Oh, here's bones. Lots of people. I just might Beautiful. stake out a claim nice. and settle down here, Jim. It is spectacular, isn't it? With a mint julep? Curious, even at the poles, there's very little variation in temperature, which maintains a planet-wide average of 76 degrees. Sounds perfect. Know, almost impossible. Like paradise. Just like Russia. More like the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was just outside Moscow. A very nice place. <laughs> well, I've never been to Russia, but I always think of, like, snow and very cold. Oh, the plants are spitting stuff at us again. Dead. Is that a new record? Did somebody say that paradise must have looked like this? It was in my line of thinking of like Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, paradise. But do the similarities end there? Where Where is this episode going to go? We seem to have a problem here, too. We're losing potency in our antimatter pods. But we've run measurements on the electromagnetic field of the planet, and they are a wee bit abnormal. Well, stay on top of it. We got a job to do here. Might as well finish it. I hear it's nice down there. I could do with a nice walk in a garden. You want to go down there with the poisonous plants? Subsurface vibrations from miles in all directions. Quite strong, fairly regular, artificially produced. Hmm. There's a humanoid. Hiding directly behind us. She's got big, big blue eyes. Oh, this beauty. Somebody watching us. It's frightening. I've been wanting to get you in a place like this for a long time. Oh. Little boyfriend, girlfriend? We've been watched. We'll probably be watched. We're moving out. Well, the only thing that's attacked us so far was the plant, but was the plant controlled by whatever they have going on under the surface. Maybe they can control the plant life or something. Or maybe the plants are just that dangerous. Interesting. A piece of styrofoam. Fragile, good cleavage. I love me some good cleavage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, he is lucky it didn't explode when he broke it in half. Garden of Eden. With landmines. And poisonous plants that shoot spikies at your chest. Our antimatter pods are completely inert. I couldn't stop it, but I know why. Something from the surface. It's like a pail of water on a fire. All right, Scotty, we'll try and find out what's going on down here. Kirk out. Some of the thorns, like those that kill Hindor. It's moving. Jim! It's okay, what? he's the Vulcan. He'll be okay. I'm sure he'll be fine. Fuck. Kirk Enterprise. Scott here, sir. We're beaming up. Oh, that's not good. It's messing with their transporter, too, whatever it is. We can't make transporter contact, sir. Couldn't beam up a fly. Our investigation of Gamma Trianguli 6 has suddenly turned into a nightmare. Yeah, it has. Oh. Dr. McCoy's potion is acting like all his potions, turning my stomach. Other than that, I am quite well. See? He's fine. Trying to get yourself killed. Do you know how much Starfleet has invested in you? 122,200. Never mind. But thanks. <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Can they control the weather as well with their highly advanced, highly powerful underground system thing? Is he gonna get struck by yeah? Woo! Like they're trying to take him out one by one. Lasers! Or I mean, I don't know. I'm just assuming somebody's after them. Oh, I got both of them. Beautiful day, Mrs. Park. Yes, the smell of burnt flesh. Just like paradise. I'm near the village. The village is primitive. Strictly tribal from the looks of it. And, Captain, there's something else. You... Mallory, you all right? Those coordinates are a short distance in that direction. On the double. What are you looking at, Chekhov? He was looking at her ass. I see what you're doing. Go there! That way! I never saw anything like- Oh no! Jeremy, you couldn't have stopped any of this. His father helped me get into the academy. Oh. Yeah, he may be just a red shirt to us, but we gotta remember that they're valuable um, assets to, to Kirk here. Should have beamed up at the first sign of trouble. You are under orders. This isn't that important a mission, Spock. Not worth the lives of three of my men. When you tried to beam up, you couldn't. Captain, our friend is back. Spock, you and Chekhov create a diversion. The tricorder readings are totally inefficient. Uh, mind your own business. <laughs> Aww. He made him cry. An interesting. What's sticking out of his back of his neck there? I won't hurt you. It struck me. Oh, well, he speaks English. With your hand. Well, I Sorry? won't strike you again. I am the eyes of Val. He must see. Who is Val? Andrew. I am Akuta. I am the leader of the feeders of Val. We would like to speak to this Val. Akuta alone speaks to Val. It is Val's wish. You got little antennas. Antennae? They are my ears for Val. They were given to me in the dim time. The dim times? So like, he made it cloudy so it was dark? Got these people to worship and follow him and then gave them light. Something has grabbed us from the planet surface, like a giant tractor beam. At least it's not a giant green hand. We'll only be able to maintain full power for 16 hours, then we burn up for sure. Scotty, you're my chief engineer. If you can't get those warp engines working, you're fired. Well, <laughs> you're fired. It's not what I expected him to say. <laughs> he causes the rains to fall and the sun to shine. All good comes from Vol. I wish to speak to him. Vol. It's very inviting. Yeah. Very welcoming. Very high order of workmanship. Very ancient. Generating great power. It would also seem to be a... Goddamn. <laughs> a force field? Obviously. Vol sleeps now. When he is hungry, you may be able to speak with him, if he desires it. Come. We will give you food and drink. If you are tired, you may rest. Well, Akuta seems quite nice. A little bit ignorant. But who can blame him for believing the way he does? These are the people of Vol. Where are the others? Oh, there are the no flowers others. in the girl's hair. The, uh... Children. Children. Little ones, like yourselves, they grow. <laughs> ah, replacements. None are necessary. They are forbidden by Val. But when a man and woman fall in love. What is love? What is love? Love is... Yes, the holding, the touching. Val has forbidden this. Well, there goes paradise. Yeah. Quite the opposite. Welcome to Bob. Our homes are open to you. Oh, thank you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm Sayana. You have a name? I am Spock. 
I fail to what? see what they find so amusing. Me too. <laughs> oh. Well, they're a jolly bunch. <laughs> Maybe they're happy in their ignorance. What a cozy you little place. You are welcome in the place of all. Now we're welcome. A while ago, this whole plant was trying to kill us. Because that was Vol. I just ran a thorough check on the natives. No decalcification, no degeneration of tissue. They're not growing old. There's a lot of places in this universe where you can just live forever, it seems. Maybe it is paradise after all. Mm. They all have this very strange platinum blonde hair color. Oh, they're giving him food. Oh, the rocks. There is no living being there. It is a machine. Nothing more. Well, the field's down. People are going in. Let's see what kind of luck we have. That's not the way. Evidently not. <laughs> it may well possess a rudimentary intelligence. It's almost as if it can read their intentions. What happens if Vol weakens around feeding the... Well, these people seem quite healthy and happy. There is a problem that we can't leave, but aside from that, I don't really see much of a need to interfere. Mess call. In my view, a splendid example of reciprocity. There are certain absolutes, Mr. Spock, and one of them is the right of humanoids to a free and unchained environment. Another is their right to choose a system which seems to work for them. Jim, these are humanoids intelligent. They need to advance and grow. Which side is Kirk going to take? This isn't life, it's stagnation. Doctor, these people are healthy and they are happy. The logical against the emotional. Gentlemen, I think this philosophical argument can wait until our ship is out of danger. We have a reading on the power source Mr. Spock requested. Power's dropping bit by bit. Nominal, but a definite drain. Are you coming along with the circuit switchover? It'll take us another eight hours to complete the work. But if we don't break out, I'd rather we didn't have to wait too long for the end of it. So its power is draining? Yeoman, yeah, speculate. What would happen if someone on this planet died? Then they would need a replacement. They'd need a replacement. We're going to kill somebody? I mean, if they don't know anything about... How is it done? <laughs> well, I... <clears throat> they would receive the necessary instructions that I'd like to see. Are we going to trick it that somebody died or I don't... What's the plan here? I'm I'm very interested. I understand, Vol. It shall be done. Uh oh, what did Vol tell him to do? Any place we can be together is paradise. Can the ship really break away? I don't know. But if we do have to stay here, would it be so very bad? Well, it seems kind of weird seeing a romantic, physical like relationship, but it's not like it's not permitted because there was a wedding before unfortunately there was also a death that prevented the wedding but the way they touched i do not understand i think it was pleasant for them i like the makeup that they have especially like the white eyeliner kind of thing going on uh-oh but it's not permitted it is pleasant makara gonna get his first boner. Val, he is angry. Uh-oh. Do you beg the lightning to strike? We meant no harm. Val speaks truly to me. The newcomers are a danger. I hope those two are gonna be okay. Tell the men of Val to meet me in the clear place when the strangers are asleep. Well, we've disrupted their whole thing that they have going on here. We are to kill the strangers. Whoa. We do not understand. Val explained it to me. I will show you. They don't even have a concept of that word. Uh, what a waste of food. I guess they have plenty. It will be done when the sun returns in the morning. I like this episode so far. Bones was right. These people aren't living. They're existing. The more I see, the more I tend to uh, agree with Bones. If we do what it seems we must, be in direct violation of the non-interference directive. These are people. They should have the opportunity of choice. 
Starfleet Command may think otherwise. I'll take my chances. How's it going, Scotty? Almost ready, sir. We'll need a half an hour yet. Within 45 minutes, the ship will be pulled down into the atmosphere. I know that. Yes. I Captain, the people of Val seem to have disappeared. <laughs> Bones almost tripped over his uh, strap there. Paul, we are on a peaceful mission. Oh, find shelter. Whoa. Nice tumble. Oh, wow. That did not just graze him. I think they will have to interfere in order to get themselves out of there. Second degree burns. Not serious. But I bet they're smart. You have an unsurpassed talent for understatement. <laughs> Whoa. 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 This girl's insane! She's been practicing. Yo, keep her on full time. The good doctor was concerned that the Valians achieved true human stature. They've taken the first step. They've learned to kill. Pretty depressing to think that one of the, like, big things that about human nature is the ability to kill. All right, Scotty, put her in full reverse. Get her out of there. Full reverse, Mr. Kyle. All engines. Oh, no Sulu this episode. Captain, we're doing it. We're pulling away. Good. Not good. Sorry, what happened? We pulled away a little. We gained maybe an hour. There's nothing left to try again. I guess you'll have to fire me, sir. You're fired. 400 people. They'll die because I couldn't see a warning sign. I had to follow orders. Always orders. This is really eating away at him. I like how this episode focuses on on all of this aspect of being in command and having people's lives, your responsibility, and... Keep those people from feeding Vol. Don't let them feed Vol. Yeah. There you go. Um, trying to figure out if you should even follow orders or not, if it's worth it for your conscience. On my command, commence firing on those coordinates. Aye, sir, but they won't penetrate that force field. This is correct. They won't have to. Stand by. The Val calls to us. Let us go to him. He hungers. Readings are getting weaker, Captain. But its reserve capacity could hold out for days. It would off a phaser attack. It would have to draw more heavily on its reserves. Scotty, commence firing and maintain. Firing. Oh, that's got to be weakening Obviously, it. Obviously, Val. I think we made him angry. But I don't think throwing a temper tantrum is going to help your situation, Mr. Ball. Scotty, cease fire! Everything's... Oh, nope, the eyes are still kind of flashing. Ball is dead. Mr. Scott, status report. Potency returning to antimatter pod. I'll have all engineering sections working on the circuits immediately. Hire this man. Transport will be ready in an hour. Scotty, you're rehired. <laughs> but it was Vol who put the fruit on the trees, caused the rain to fall. Vol cared for us. You'll learn to care for yourselves with our help. You'll learn to build for yourselves, think for Look yourselves. Look at them. They're touching. That's what we call freedom. You'll like it a lot. Love. You'll like that too, a lot. You and your children. What are children? Little ones. Look like you. They. Just go on the way you're going, you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every time he says something they don't understand, they just start laughing. Captain, I'm not at all certain we did the correct thing on Gamma Triangle Six. You are aware of the biblical story of Genesis. Yes, of course. We have given the people of Vile the apple, the knowledge of good and evil, if you will, as a result mm -hmm. of which they too have been driven out of paradise. Are you casting me in the role of Satan? Oh, Captain. Ooh. Is there anyone on this ship who even remotely looks like Satan? I am not aware of anyone who fits that description. I didn't think you would. What image of Satan are they going on? That was another very interesting and fun episode. I liked that one quite a bit. I thought the set was really nice. Very green, lush, lots of color, lots of plant life. 
the look of the uh the the Vol people, the uh Akuda and his tribe. I really liked their design. I liked the makeup. I liked the wigs. Um their outfits were pretty cool too. I thought it was a very visually interesting episode to watch. I do wish we could have come into some kind of more of a contact with the Vol, kind of see what the mechanism looks like, maybe talk to him, hear his voice, learn a little bit more about how he got there, where he came from, who created him, and for what purpose was he created. Things like that are things that I would love to know. I did enjoy the visual of the entryway to Vol's lair. I felt like I was at a mini golf park and I was supposed to putt into the <laughs> into the mouth of uh, the, the dragon there. And then there is the question of should they have interfered? Well, I would say yes, just based on the fact that they needed to to get out. I'm not really sure about the prime directive because you guys talk about it a lot, but I don't think they really have explicitly stated exactly what it entails yet in an episode or if they will i think maybe you guys are drawing from perhaps things that they have made clear maybe later on in the franchise somewhere but i gather that you know from what you guys are telling me that they're not supposed to interfere with civilizations that aren't um don't have like warp capacity and space travel capacity things like that but if the lives of everybody there is at stake then is that like are they okay do they have permission to do they have permission then to interfere if it can save the lives of 400 plus people of the starfleet and then not even considering that there's still the question of should they have interfered because these people are essentially living as slaves they're stunted in their growth their advancements they're living a lot like machines as opposed to people they're not allowed to have romantic relationships they don't reproduce they are super efficient they they have all their needs taken care of they don't age or at least they age at a very slow slow rate they have food they have water they have whatever weather they need to keep the environment planet food and everything like that and they were definitely missing out on a lot of things but they weren't unhappy because they didn't know about those things they didn't know about love they didn't know about sex they didn't know about even violence against one another with the intent to kill just a completely foreign concept to them so i guess my question is if their lives are in danger the the crew of the enterprise does that change how they follow the prime directive and regardless of that, say the Enterprise and the landing party were in no danger whatsoever, would that change things? Would they just have left them alone? Well, I know Kirk wouldn't have, but what, would, what were they supposed to do according to Starfleet? Just let these people live as slaves? I don't know. But they were happy. I think humans will oftentimes except for in very extreme circumstances, be able to find happiness and joy with what kind of hand they're dealt. So I was playing a game recently and we were going through this kind of like village in like medieval times. They didn't have electricity. They didn't have running water. It was very, you know, they were on farms. It was beautiful, beautiful landscape, a very simple life. The people looked happy they were working the fields they were you know just going about their day and i thought you know this looks really nice and then people in my live chat were like yeah but they don't have internet and there was a lot of disease back then that they didn't have any cures for and things like that but it's like if they don't know about the internet if they don't know about cars if they don't know about air conditioning or heating that's just how life is for them and they have joy in other things. And yeah, people in the future might look back to our times and be like, how did these people find any joy? Because they don't have whatever they are going to have, you know, 500 years from now or whatever. 
And I think as technology advances, as great as it is, I feel like there are things that are lost along the way. But I can't really say because I didn't, I didn't live back then. I don't know. And I'm not going to live that far into the future. So all I know is the life that I'm living right now in this century, in this era. And I would argue that even today, we don't have complete freedom. We have restrictions. We have laws that we have to follow. Some of them, it's really good that we have those laws. You know, don't kill, don't steal, things like that. Some of the laws are a little bit questionable. Some of the things that we have to abide by are not of our own choosing. And we're kind of in the same position as these Valian people, if you really think about it. Maybe. Um, discuss. <laughs> Very cool episode. I really like it when they make us think about our situation, our world. A lot of the themes that we were talking about in the 60s are still very pertinent to today. They still ring true. We still have the same questions and we still don't have answers to a lot of these questions. Maybe. It gets messy when like politics and stuff comes into play and I don't really like talking about that, but I do feel like there's kind of a parallel here with that. But I do suppose when I really think about it, I can come to the conclusion that if laws are going to be imposed onto people, at the very least, they should be imposed by other people and not by a machine. So that's the difference here. All right, I'm rambling. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to be continuing with air date orders. So the next episode is going to be the doomsday machine. Hope you guys will be looking forward to it. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.